Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. Uh, we're going low tech this week. I got a, I got a lav mic here. Uh, what happened to the fancy boom mic? Anyway, for those of you who might be going off to South America for the fun because it's summer coming up, I just wanted you all to know that the CDC has just issued a level two notice for yellow fever, which is now rampant in most of South America. So a level two new notice means that you should take extra precautions. And since yellow fever is transmitted by mosquitoes, you need to be very careful about that. And if you've not been vaccinated against yellow fever, uh, you should probably be vaccinated at least 10 days before going to South America. Uh, if you've had a yellow vaccine, as I have, yellow vaccine, yellow, yellow fever vaccine, <laughs> it might've been yellow. I didn't see the color when I stuck it in me. Uh, but um, then you might need a booster. Anyway, uh, the only countries that are excluded are parts of Chile and Argentina. The rest of the countries, particularly uh, in Colombia, Peru, and Bolivia, have had a pretty significant outbreak. So uh, for those of you who don't know, as I said, it's uh, transmitted by mosquitoes. Most, mostly it's a febrile self-limited disease, but in about 15%, uh, you can get very severe liver disease and jaundice, which is why it's called yellow fever. Anyway. I'm here to try and keep you up to date, and there's just one more example for traveling to South America, and a lot of people are going there from, from Texas. Uh, so, <laughs> measles, it's never going away apparently, but we are up to 935 cases uh, in the United States. 13% of those have been hospitalized, and unfortunately three deaths, and I emphasize all of this is preventable. The weekly measles cases, are, it looks like they're finally beginning to come down. So, looks like it may have peaked a few weeks ago, so hopefully, uh, it'll start to stop. Start to stop. I like. It. It'll begin to slow down. I don't know. We should probably have chances when we do these to like edit them. But the, but well, you know, it's start to stop. Slow down. Uh, if you look at the cumulative cases, uh, we're up. It's here 935. But look at compared to 24 and 23. So not quite up to where we were in 2019. But man, we might still get there. Chicago reported its first two cases. Uh, one is an adult resident who traveled internationally through O'Hare, and the other one is a suburban uh, adult from Cook County, and they don't really know that much about them. So if you look at the vaccines to, for, M, for MMR and measles cases, mostly it correlates pretty well. I mean, the states that are low vaccination, you're seeing cases. So that's certainly applicable for Texas, uh, uh, Louisiana, uh, Arkansas. Uh, you can see in Oklahoma and Colorado. The only ones that don't really fit in that are California. You know, they were around 94.5% vaccinated, but still had a, uh, some a significant outbreak. And the reason for that is if there's a small group of, or a small cluster of people who aren't vaccinated, all it takes is one exposure to have some cases. That's why we try to get at least 95. It's even better if you're 97 or 98% protected. In Texas, we're still leading the way 702 cases now, and these are the leading counties. Uh, you know, you can see cases in El Paso now, in Lubbock that we've reported. I mentioned that we uh, detected um, measles in wastewater, and uh, the largest number in Gaines County where the uh, outbreak really first started. So of those 702 cases, it's pretty well distributed, evenly distributed between under the age of four, five to 17, uh, eight and over the age of 18, and almost all are associated you know, 96% are associated with uh, being unvaccinated. So we're finally getting through the respiratory season, uh, respiratory illness season. This dotted line shows you uh, sort of the national baseline for presenting with upper respiratory infections. And each of these colored lines represents previous years. And you can see the, the red line with the circles is our year 24-25 uh, this season. And we kind of crossed over the baseline uh, at the end of April. So it's now May, we're sort of out of the, uh, the respiratory virus season, but it ended up being a pretty tough season, flu season in particular for kids. So if you look at uh, the pneumonia influenza mortality this past year, it was higher this year than it has been uh, in uh, the previous years since the uh, global pandemic and 216 children died this year from flu. Uh, so that was a you know, pretty big number, one of the largest numbers we've had in a while. Unfortunately, uh, the flu vaccine rate 
for children plummeted from 64% five years ago to 49% this season. So for reasons that are unclear to me, many parents were not getting their kids flu shots. And the thing about vaccination, it doesn't prevent you from getting the disease, much like COVID. It doesn't prevent you from getting infected because the vaccine is uh, IgG, generates an IgG response, and you still can have your mucosa infected, but it does prevent serious illness. And probably as a result of the low vaccination rate, uh, we had more children die this year than uh, since the last 15 years. So that's really a shame. So remind parents, please get next season, be sure to get your children vaccinated for the flu. Now, COVID has been very low lately, but you know, I've had several people who were, uh, who've told me they had an upper respiratory infection, pretty socked in upper respiratory symptoms, including one of our, one of our board members who was on a phone call. And I simply said, uh, did you check for COVID? Well, no, check for COVID and it was COVID positive. You know, so I've known several people who have been just a really bad cold late in the season and it's COVID. So you should always check because, you know, that person could be on Paxlovid and it's highly effective, particularly if you're over the age of 65. Uh, wastewater is low, but it's still around. That's the main thing. There's still COVID around. We had one other outbreak this year, whooping cough or pertussis. There have been 8,000 cases of whooping cough in 2025 compared to 3,800 in 2024. And this is a bacterial disease that's particularly dangerous for infants. It causes very thick secretions and they have trouble managing it, getting pneumonias fairly often. And again, vaccination rates for whooping cough have declined since the coronavirus from 94.9% to 92%. Doesn't seem like a lot. But in this country our size, that accounts for, you know, almost 8,000 cases. And what we do with that particular vaccine, it's called DTAP. It's diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. And it's given to children under seven years of age, starting at six weeks. And it's a series of five uh, vaccinations uh, each year until they're seven years old. And there's a booster, Tdap, which is a booster shot that protects, mostly given to adolescents but around the age of 11 and 12 and adults who've never received the vaccination, who want to protect themselves. So I want to end today with a fabulous, fabulous story of Valerie, the miniature dachshund. Now this, I love this story because it makes no sense to me whatsoever. So this is a mini dachshund uh, who was just a one-year-old puppy who was on vacation with her Australian parents. And they went to the kangaroo island of Australia, 1700 mile, fairly isolated island. And on the second day of the trip, the parents the, the irresponsible parents, wanted to go fishing. So they put the little mini dachshund uh, in a playpen. Now, if you ever owned a mini dachshund, they are Houdinis. They never can be contained by uh, a little playpen. So they got back and the dog was gone. And they tried to, you know, they looked around for the dog and they couldn't find it. And they finally gave up and, and left. Can you can you imagine me giving up and le leaving Lily? That would oh geez, I'd rather die looking for her than return home. Anyway, the residents of Kangaroo Island spotted the, this little mini dachshund running around about a year later with a little pink collar, and it turns out uh, they decided to try and trap the dog, and they got in, they got the entire wildlife rescue team to start setting up uh, camera traps and then food traps. And they were eventually able to uh, get Valerie, here's a nice picture of Valerie, uh, back, to, back safe and sound. Now here's the part that I find that's very difficult to understand. Because in the article they were writing about, they said, like, can you believe that they, they have venomous snakes and eagles and all these predatory animals? Could, you know, I just couldn't figure out how Valerie survived. And I was thinking, <laughs> I have a mini dachshund, Lily, I'm surprised those animals survived. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a snake left on the island and any eagle flying. These little things, will, uh, they'll, they'll kill any little rodent and eat them. I don't know. Anyway, I'm surprised the kangaroo island is still surviving with Valerie. But good news is Valerie's home, same and so. Lily wanted me to report that to you. So I'm going to end today with a bunch of shout outs. First of all, this is Nurses Week. Nurses Week is where we recognize the important contribution that nurses make to healthcare. It's never been so obvious how important nurses are since the COVID pandemic, and we are very grateful for all the nurses that take care of our patients in the hospital and in our outpatient clinics. I also want to con congratulate Dr. Susan Hilsenbeck, the Director of Quantitative Sciences and Shared Resources 
in the Dan L. Duncan Cancer Center. She was named a fellow of the American Association for Cancer Re Research. It's a very prestigious uh, and it recognizes her contri uh, contributions to the field of uh, breast cancer. She is one of 33 new fellows. Uh, also, I got a great opportunity this week to visit our Biotech Academy at Rusk, a uh, wonderful middle school. Uh, they entertained me and showed me all the stuff that they were doing. Uh, they participate in what's called the Health Occupation Students of America Conference. 37 of them won awards, and 20 of those students will be attending the International Leadership uh, Conference to be held in another country, Nashville, Tennessee. Anyway, congratulations to all the students. And finally, of course, it's Mother's Day, Mother's Day this weekend. Uh, I want to just thank every mother out there for what you do. <laughs> You're the mother of us all. Uh, we couldn't, any of us could survive without our mothers. Anyway, uh, have a wonderful weekend, a great Mother's Day, and I can't wait to see you next week. <laughs>